I would say it's number two for me in like my experience watching behind Georgetown and Villanova because and maybe it's wrong because at the time we didn't know what the Duke program like all the championships and everything but UNLV hadn't done it yet and and they were certain they were like an amazing I had a UNLV cap back then in high school in New York they were could they beat pro teams and unbelievable and all this but they hadn't done it the way Georgetown had just the previous season with and they returned you know all world players um, to a powerhouse program and they were the defending champs and they were the heavy favorites. So I would say I'd put Georgetown Villanova one in my experience just as a fan and I but I would probably put Duke and UNLV right behind it. Well, I wouldn't put Duke and UNLV right behind it because I happen to believe that as great as the running Rebels were, make no mistake about it, particularly since they had bombed Duke in the national championship game the year before by 30. I understand that point, but Duke came back that year. They won, they lost the national championship game to UNLV. They didn't have Grant Hill, but they had Grant Hill the next year. And even though he was a freshman, he was something special. And so for me, I never looked at it as that lopsided. It was an upset, sure, but not that lopsided. Villanova, an eighth seed in 1985, who would not have even made it into the tournament unless they had expanded it to 64 teams. Them being an eighth seed going up against Hoyer Paranoia. I'm not going to even say Georgetown, Jay Billis. Hoyer Paranoia. You're talking about Ewing and Graham and, 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 and Reggie Williams and Michael Jackson. And, I mean, Lord have mercy. I mean, you know, when you think about that and how dominant Georgetown was, first year, Ewing's year, freshman, they lose to North Carolina in the national championship when Freddie Brown mistakenly gave the ball to James Worthy, all right? They don't do anything the next year. Then they come back, they beat Houston. Five slammer jammer for the national title. And then the Ewan's last year, they're going up against Villanova and, and Raleigh Massimino and the four corners and all of this. Uh, holding the ball for eternity. That had a lot to do with them winning the damn game. But in the end, it was a huge upset because not only did we expect Villanova with Ed Pinckney and the crew, my brother Ed Pinckney, we expected them to lose. We expected them to get completely annihilated. And that did not happen. I still believe to this day that is the greatest upset in the history of college basketball. You could point to earlier round games, Lehigh beating Duke, and I think it was Middle Tennessee State beat Syracuse and stuff like that. But I'm talking about the national championship. Villanova beating Georgetown, yes. That was huge. Final four national championship picture is what I'm talking about, whether it's a semifinal or national championship game. And I'm going with Duke. I'm sorry, with Villanova upsetting Hoya Paranoia. Let me not forget Gene Smith either, uh, uh, Jay Billis. Yeah, I think if you if you're going with Final Four only, because people are going to say UMBC over Virginia, 16 beating one for the first time ever right. is the greatest upset. Now I understand yeah. that, but I, I'm I'm with you, Stephen A. That if you're going to go Final Four national championship, I think there are two that I would put in front of of Duke UNLV. And you're exactly right that that I think a lot of it from Duke UNLV came from the 1990 game where UNLV blew out Duke by by 30 points, and, and it was an undefeated team with Larry Johnson. Stacey Ogman, Greg Anthony, Anderson Hunt, you name it, going into that 91 semifinal. But number one, I think, for me, would still be 1983 and NC State beating Houston. I, I don't know how many people thought that NC State had a chance in that game, even a chance, but it wasn't very many, and all of them were wearing red uniforms in that game. They, they, they were the only ones that believed it. And then I would put I would put Villanova Georgetown right then, because right next to it, because of the dominance of both uh, Houston and Georgetown in those respective years. Uh, Duke had a, a, an excellent team that went to the final the year before. I was a, a graduate assistant coach on that team. And then, Stephen A., you're absolutely right that the difference in that game w was, was Grant Hill. That Grant Hill is the best player that Duke has ever had. Leitner is the, the most decorated and, uh, and the most accomplished in, in his four years in college. But there's never been a better player in a Duke uniform than Grant Hill, and, and he was that difference maker. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I'm just talking about the emotional impact of the, of the game. Like, are you kidding me? You, and I know it's a one-and-done tournament. I get it. But UNLV that year was like when you – and by the way, the Fab like, – uh, there are a lot of teams since 
that we remember maybe or are glorified more, but that UNLV team at mm -hmm. the time, when you go back and put yourself in, the, in that moment, were unbeatable. They were, they were I think, my, at least my perception of them, I was in high school, I think a junior in high school, was they were, I can't remember ever feeling about a college basketball team that they were as dominant or as unbeatable as I felt UNLV was at that time. Well, that's okay, Max. You're the youngest of the crew, so you wouldn't know. C certain situations, <laughs> you are wet behind the ears, breath smelling like Simulac. You're a young puppy. We forgive you. We understand Boy, that you wouldn't young, know. But let me tell you this. Right. Let, show, let, let me put this in this. Let me put this. In, that's right. I am older than you. But let me put this in this proper perspective to tell you something about Grand Hill because you've never heard me say this before. We saw Grand Hill as a freshman. You win a national championship. Remember the one that they lost to Arkansas, Nolan, Nolan uh, 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 Richardson, 40 minutes of hell, Corlys Williamson and the crew. One of the great, great national championship games we've ever seen. Let me tell you something about Grand Hill right now. One of the greatest tragedies in the history of basketball, in my opinion, Jay Billis, is that Grant Hill had that nasty ankle injury that he could not overcome in the pros. Because I got news for you, Max Kellerman. Are you ready for this? Jordan is Jordan, and we get that. But I got news for you. It wouldn't only have been Kobe challenging the greatness of Michael Jordan if Grant Hill had never gotten hurt. If Grant Hill was able to stay healthy, especially game, once Tracy sure. McGrady had arrived in Orlando with him, I'm telling y'all right now, Grant Hill was one of the most sensational players you had ever seen. This brother was special. And if he had never gotten hurt, I would have loved to have seen what he would have done on the pro level. That's how good Grant Hill was. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.